everybody yeah yeah you're listening to a comedy advice podcast i'm not going to finish that song because it's absolute garbage but you know what is not garbage is you guys and you guys know best and you guys know that you're on a comedy advice podcast and i'm stefan satani your host and i am delighted to be here guiding you down this river of hades into the depths of this hearty episode it's beautiful it's it kind of leads you out of hell it's a weird way there's a twist a turn and then uh just a roundabout so you'll get there it doesn't matter because i'm your tour guide and i am so happy and you should trust me but uh you know who else you should trust and love is our special guest danny jollis he's a comedian he's an actor he was george on crazy ex girlfriend he's been in a bunch of commercials as well And he's got a new special out about six parts. And guess what, guys? You're like, how much do I have to shell out for this special? Nothing. It's free. And it's on YouTube. The most common of tubes. Everybody has it. Everybody knows it. Even my grandmama knows about YouTube. She's like, Stefan, do you see this funny clip on the YouTube? And I'm like, Grandma, you're dead. Why are you talking? So it's interesting. But it's on there. Link is going to be in the show notes. We talk about his special. And how he put it together pretty masterfully. Danny also recounts a tale in his early comedy career where he opened for Aaron Carter and how he made it doing 45 minutes in front of a crowd that was there for Aaron Carter. So he's just a delightful human being. Please follow him on the socials. See him live if you get the chance and watch his special. All those great things that you good little Samaritans are doing. And while you're there in your good mood, doing your good things. Don't forget to follow a comedy advice podcast on Instagram or me at S Satani. And it's tomorrow coming up my show trash or treasure live at house of comedy, seven 30 be there. Links are in the show notes. It's going to be a blast an eruption of a good time. It's going to be the Vesuvius of comedy shows, except hopefully not as many deaths. Um, but we are going to kill, metaphorically speaking, or li- no, not definitely not literally speaking. Why did I even entertain that? Nope, nope. It's going to be pure, non-murderous fun. Oh, <laughs> I squeaked on that. It doesn't mean I'm lying, but it's going to be an awesome time. Thank you guys so much. And I think I'm out of breath, so I'm just going to let you into the episode. I think chiropractors oh, are real. I'm a I'm a chiropractor believer. I'll be I'll be honest. Yeah. There was this doctor and this like chiropractic doctor from like Australia I used to watch all the time. And he would like rescue people with these bops. It's like it's beautiful stuff, man. If you wanna if you wanna lose your mind watching something, watch this, watch this Australian doctor like save these kids. What's his name? Oh god. It's like Dr. Ian something. And then okay. there was like real controversy. He was like this incredible Australian doctor. It's something called um Gonstead chiropractic is the type of chiropractor it is where it's like yeah. normally when you go into a chiropractor they kind of just like crack your back crack your neck crack it you know do the thing hit that they do a thing where it's like it's for injury specifically and they like find what is wrong and like pop that it's like more so like popping one specific thing back and he had these videos where like people would just be completely locked up and he would just like save them people with like you know uh Oh, I, I like uh disc like like um what's it called when you like have a disc that's out of place but oh would, like, like a herniated fix, disc or a yeah uh, he had a herniated disc yeah he would like fix herniated discs like all this stuff was beautiful people would like and like sometimes like these people would cry because it's like you know years of like years of like i can't move my arm above here and just all of a sudden like one pop and they're like <gasps> and so it's like beautiful and then he had a baby and he like made this video where he was like, he was like, he was like, babies also like need this stuff. Uh, he's a doctor. And he was like, well, my own baby, I'm going to show you something. And he like popped its like little baby's back and the baby like cries with like immediately stop crying. And he's like, that's why so many babies have discomfort, blah, blah, blah. And people lost their minds. And they were like, you can't do that to a baby. That's insane. You're a crazy. Bird. And like he got canceled, semi canceled, but not really. They just, he just faced like backlash. And so he cut, he took down his entire channel. Dang, dang. He's, and he's never put out a video since. But you can find it. You can still find all the videos, but wild stuff. Oh, baby. You, I, I will <laughs> say that that is the type of chiro, chiropractic, chiropractor I believe in. Because I feel like there are those... 
there are those professional chiropractors that that specialize in in finding the spot. They're they're really good. They've done it for a long time. Then there's like the fast food chiropractors, which I think are 100%. the ones that I go to where they're like, okay. I, and I literally, I don't know why I still go to them because every single time I'm like, look, my shoulder. And they're like, okay, let's crack that neck. And now I was like with my right. back, they're like, let's crack that neck. It's just the same routine. So I don't know. Exactly. They, they just do the same thing every single time, which, uh, you know, might be helpful, might not be, but I agree. Right. I, I, I remember watching that being like, oh, like he would show you, he would like, they're great videos. You're going to love these videos. They, he, he would like have a thermometer and he would like go down their back and you would see it like rise at a certain point. And he'd be like, this is where the irritation is. And he'd like focus oh, on it. There's like this okay. one that's like really beautiful where it's like this kid and he's like, he, I mean, he's like, he's like this, like he walks in like this, like he's just like, Oh stuck. man. Oh man. And he like lifted a tree and like, he's, it's like, he's just stuck. And this guy's like, I'm going to work on you. And it's like, I think like four different visits and he like slowly like gets this kid unlocked uh -huh. and like by like the third or fourth visit, the kid's like starting to walk normal. And like the dad starts to like cry. Cause he's like, he's like, I just like, didn't know if my son was ever going to be okay. Like it was just, it's just beautiful. It's beautiful stuff. Dang. That's cool. I'll have to check that out. Cause I love learning about that stuff. Cause sometimes I would watch YouTube videos of if, if I messed up something or something locked up, there are chiropractors mm -hmm. out there that have some good, good videos. I've also seen, it's kind of like that, but uh, these Facebook ads or maybe YouTube ads where there are these, there's one guy, I can't remember his name, but he was kind of like the salt bay of chiropractors because he just like, Ooh. you know, you, you know how it's just like, ooh, so that the guy would be laying down on his stomach and, and the chiropractor would go up and be like, hmm, <laughs> and then do the, the really quick movement. And then the person would be like, ah, and they'd feel better. And that just was random Whoa. shots of him going up and doing that. It was like interpretive dance plus chiropractic. So was oh, uh, I don't know if I love a second. I don't know if I would love like a second thing going on with my chiropractor. That's true. That's true. You yeah. know, I feel like it's a hard job and I feel like I wouldn't want like a second. Like we're also trying to make it art. I was, I'd be like, you know, let's just try to like get it right medically. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't need to see you do a handstand there, doctor. If you yeah, could yeah, just, yeah. I, I, you let's, know. let's just get this right. You know, let's really try to focus. Why is this not charging? You know, Ooh. that's the kind of question that I find myself asking right now. Yeah. It sounds like something needs to be popped into place. Something is locked up. Is it the charger? Okay, so we'll never know. Will we know? Plugged in. What am I doing wrong? What am I doing? Oh, I'll tell you what I'm doing wrong. Oh. Okay. We're good. <laughs> I I heard the little sound of satisfaction from the charger. So yeah. Or from the laptop. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. that's great. Well, good. Well, you know what? Um, I think we can go ahead and get started. I am fully juiced and charged, especially with this very special guest that I have on a comedy advice podcast, Danny Jollis, comedian, actor, and just really funny dude. Hey, how are you, man? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing so well. So well. The back, I know we talked about this pre-ep, but the back is uh, unlocked and I feel like I'm reaching my full potential. But speaking of it's, full potential. Yeah, have, have people been following this on the podcast? Do they know about the back situation? No, this is actually the first I've talked. This is the first episode since the incident that I, I'm oh, openly yeah. speaking about it. Well, let me tell you something. You podcast listeners, you don't know, but this guy's been going through it. He's been through a journey since his last episode. <laughs> 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 yeah if you want to check about it on on my back blog um back to back yeah. dot back to back dot, back to back dot .com. yes that's it that's it you guys will not regret it but th things you also will not regret is danny you have an absolutely phenomenal special for free on youtube six parts and i was free. uh I don't know if that was the thing that blew out the back, but it was phenomenal. It blew me away for sure. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. And for all of you listeners that might be a little late to the game, just like I was, I think it came out in March and um, a yep, beautiful end of March. Awesome. And, and it was a beautiful special where 
it's it was called six parts and it looked like six 10 minute segments through um don't tell comedy where you ended up going into very unconventional spots i think there was a barber shop there was a yeah, surf we did. shop yep barber shop surf shop uh art gallery recording studio uh and uh a here we go it's coming Oh man, I still have to like think about a comedy club and then it was the last one. And then there's one more, but yeah, we did, uh, we a would gym. take these, gym. it's a uh, gym. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we, we would, um, it's cool. It's what don't tell comedy does as a, as a company, which is they kind of, uh, they do shows any place, but a comedy club really. Um, I've loved what they do forever. I like love doing mm -hmm. their shows. Cause I've like always loved interacting with a room and kind of like, figuring out like what's what's going on in here you know and then mm -hmm. i had i'd sort of for a while because i like just the way I'd, i've done stand-up most of my career like yes i headline on the road but for the most part i do 10 minute sets like that's what i do around la that's what i do around so i was like i was thinking about my first special and i was like you know it's like i can do my hour but the truth is my 10 minute chunks are my, what i do best and so mm. I had sort of told people like, I kind of want to do six, 10 minute chunks. And I told uh, Kyle and the don't tell people. And they were like, we can do that. And we, uh, we did it. And it was also an incredibly uh, ambitious and someone call stupid thing to do to try to film it <laughs> with the budget we had, but we pulled it off and we were, and it's, it, I'm so proud of it. <laughs> so one quick question about don't tell comedies, how far in advance did you know that it was going to be at that venue before you ended up performing there? Is there a little so we did it over two or? weekends. Um, so it was over two weekends. Uh, I think four shows in the first weekend, two on the second. Um, but I mean, this is what made like on top of the, we're trying to do a comedy special in, like we're trying, you know, usually you do a couple tapings, you can kind of yeah. edit together based on one location. Like we, we basically hammered ourselves into a corner of like, well, all of these different tapings have to work. You know, I know people have done specials where it's like, they'll do four tapings and yeah. they'll just like get one that kills. Um, we had to get, we had to go six for six basically, which was like scary. And then on top of that base, a lot of these places are, actual functioning businesses so we would get in at like four five o'clock and we would have two hours to set up for a special taping um and gordy earl and brad Silnitzer co-directed it and we would just we would just we had we hung one light up top every show and we set up the stage and we had these lights in the back and like that was it and then we would set up the chairs and it was like we we the thing that was like it's like we knew where we, we knew the locations a couple weeks ahead of time but i mean mm -hmm. we would go into a, every single venue had a moment of uh we're fucked like every single venue had a moment where we were like okay well this just won't work and oh then we would just God. have to like figure out how to get around it <laughs> and then we we did but yeah, wow. the last one was the barber shop, and like, you know, we walked in and we were like, "Oh, there's mirrors behind me." Mm -hmm. You can't film with mirrors. It's impossible. You know, you're gonna see the camera. It's gonna be the most distracting special of all time. So right. we like, if you watch that one again, we 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 hang, we hung like every smock we could find in front of the mirrors to block the mirrors, and then like literally five minutes before we opened the doors. We were like, it's perfect. It's ready to go. Like, way to go. Hey, we're doing it. And somebody goes to the into the bath. Like, someone's like, I'm going to use the bathroom before everybody comes in. And we open the bathroom door. And, like, the loudest fan we've ever heard just, like, started anytime you open that bathroom. We were like, well, that's a problem. Uh, and so oh, we had no. to, like, <laughs> we had to basically, like, shut down the bathroom for the time I was on stage. It was and we like oh. had to tell people we were because we had like, a couple comments before me. We were like, guys, got to go to the bathroom, like go to the bathroom now because this thing is going to cannot go. To the, it was brutal. We had so many issues. Every place had a couple of those. It was thrilling. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it seems like you got it didn't seem like that from any of the places that were filmed when it 
came to the live production because it was awesome. And it was really cool that you did do those 10 minute bits as well. I, I think I had heard you on another interview talking about that. And I feel like you were super strong with that. I felt like every single, because every single location also, there was a different part. I think it was a little bit about me in the in the surf shop and the barber shop was sex and then uh, love life, technology, different people and mm -hmm. uncommon or controversial opinions. Unpopular, unpopular opinions, uh, yeah. Unpopular opinions. And um, all of them, I felt like the writing was so good where I think my favorite bit was mm, it's really hard actually to decide one but i think i'll stick with this one i'll commit where th your technology bit where you were talking about how dangerous our grandkids are going to think the things that we did were and the way that you just kept building on it was so i don't want to spoil it because you guys are going to have listeners and viewers you're going to have to watch it but it was so good how you built up into that and then just had the the little in between peaks of the grandkid and then the grandpa telling the stories and beautiful. Yeah. Thanks. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm, that is like a joke I'm so proud of. And that will always be a joke. If that joke, I will always stay up at night and be like, how was it never a late night set? I'll never understand. Uh, Cause I was so yes. proud of that joke. And for years I kept submitting it to late night being like, are you sure this is, so clean <laughs> this is the cleanest joke I've ever written. It's so safe. It's so like straightforward. It's my joke that like, particularly like, you know, when I'm not on a coast, like mm -hmm. that joke is people love. I was like, this is they, I never have to do it on late night, but I'm so proud of that joke. And it's been cool watching people find it. Cause I'm like, Oh, it's just, it's one of my absolute favorites. <laughs> It's such a good joke. And I mean, even just the language that you sprinkle in as you're telling the stories where um, when you're talking about the different vehicles and you're like, you take a slice of that and it's just, yeah. it just makes me hang on every word waiting for the next thing you're going to say. It's a masterpiece. Thank you. So good. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. The scariest absolutely. part is it almost was longer. Uh, we had to like cut things. We almost had a scooter section about like about like lime scooters and stuff like that and i was like <laughs> this thing is just too long but that's also insane it's like it was it once you get into the world of it like i was able to write so much and i was like it just this joke cannot be 20 hours long but yeah i like had so many alts and like i initially mm -hmm. had a part about cars just cars in general and i had to like, uh... cut and i like cut that and i sort of like skip cars i just go straight to like I just go sh straight to um, uh, uh, motorcycle buses, right? bus to motorcycle. Yeah, bus to motorcycle. So it's like yeah, but it was like that was that was like uh, oh Uber. It starts with Uber, but we like literally skip yeah. cars. We don't even do like what it was like to drive. I had like a whole section about what it was like to drive of just like yeah, we just uh, they told us not to drink and drive, and we all just kind of did. But like, you know, we'd be, but we'd be super, but like, we'd be close. It's like, we knew there was a limit and we'd push it to the maximum. And it was like this whole long thing. And like, <laughs> I cut that. That's like the scary, that's the scary thing about all my jokes. Cause I think one of my strengths and debatable weaknesses is that I uh, do very long jokes. I like to really live in a world for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. what people don't know is like, whatever final version you see of the joke it's like man there was a version of it that was double the length <laughs> like like i really love to live in it <laughs> that's really funny and and i do think that is one of your strengths too as far as the the finished product is concerned because also your fireworks joke too is mm -hmm. so good and it's so right i hate mm -hmm. I, I think when i first started to think about how boring fireworks are it was when people started just posting videos of it on social media and i was just like it's even more boring there but you bring it to a level and use your imagination to create the story of if they were to be upgraded and updated yeah. this is what it would be like beautiful ah. thank you thank you <laughs> thank you thank you so much uh yeah, yeah i love that joke
It's it's so good. And then one other thing I wanted to talk about too, really quickly, was I know that you had just mentioned that you know you you really like the don't tell comedy and going into different rooms and kind of figuring things out. One of the things too that um, you kind of set it up front in the first part where you were like, I don't call you out. I don't make fun of you in the crowd or anything. Um, cause that happened to me and I don't like it. I've got the face and mm -hmm. you talk. Uh, and when you said that, I don't know why, maybe it was just a me thing, but I was thinking, oh, okay, so maybe he's not going to interact with the crowd or, or just, um, not connect to the crowd, but you, without because a lot of comedians do make fun of people and and um go into that and use that as part of their sets really uh whether filler or they're just really strong at it but i felt like you were really connected to the crowd where you were talking to them as like a whole and sometimes if somebody would blurt something out you might respond to them but i felt like beyond just the terrifying aspect of being in a new place in an unconventional comedy place to tell jokes you also made sure that the crowd was along for the ride and kept them engaged and were really there for them and so i, I thought thank that you. was a really strong skill yeah thank you yeah i i appreciate that i always i always like first off i'm in general like i, I am somebody who like you have to want it so badly for me to get mad at you if you're in the crowd and like you know every now and then somebody just wants trouble but it's like I will give somebody every opportunity to get out of trouble. Like I will give you, I like, I don't like negative interactions at shows. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's good. I don't think it, I don't think it has people come back. Like I think it stops people from coming back to comedy shows when they get made fun of. So it's like, <clears throat> I will do everything I can to duck that. But actually mm -hmm. like something I loved about the special and I didn't really think about it until after we like filmed it was, you know, most people film specials and it's sort of like, guys, I'm doing a big show and it's like all your fans come and it's like, you know, this obviously very supportive crowd. And I did six shows where it was like, nobody even, the crowd didn't even know I was filming the special, you know, better yet, like liked me or even knew who I was. So it was like, you really see me battle them and like push them through jokes in a way that's like, it's cool. Cause that's what it's really like. That's, that's an average show. An average show is like, here group of strangers like we're gonna I, I need you guys to hop on board with these premises and it like takes a while it's like i liked i liked that you got to see that for better or for worse with the special because sometimes you like see me being like come on but i do also think that's like true to comedy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, yeah i definitely agree with that and i felt uh Maybe I'll have to see it again to see it the specific parts. I felt the only real times where you're trying to get people on board was in the comedy club for the unpopular opinions on, on just like a few yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But even that was like, correct, you know, but like it, as frustrating yeah, yeah. as it was, it's also like I remember watching it back when we had the first cuts and being like, it kind of makes sense. Like it is the premise it is unpopular opinions. It, they probably yeah. shouldn't be on board immediately. I guess that was the point. It's like in your yeah. mind when you're filming your special, you're like, oh, I want it to be like raucous applause the entire time. And like mm -hmm. every single word I said is met with like, but it was fun watching it back being like, oh, that they're not on board and I'm frustrated. And that feels good. That feels right for this. I remember being like, All right, I'm cool with it. <laughs> I accept it. Oh my God. Well, it was so good. And just considering the fact, I know you mentioned this too. These people were not necessarily, they weren't, no, they didn't even know that a special was being filmed. They weren't yeah, particularly they knew they were being there. Filmed. Like we told them there was a filming happening. Like uh -huh. they signed things and we had things posted, but like they didn't know it was my thing. <laughs> they like, and they certainly didn't know, like, I think the level of care, like, I think never mind. They're like, oh, he's like filming a set. I don't think they realized mm -hmm. it was like my first special. Like, I'm really, this is a big deal. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, considering all of that, the fact that, um, what else was there? Um, that you had to do it in one, basically one shot for each of the parts. And instead of somebody like the traditional special where they do four tapings or so, and then just trim and cut the best parts or the best reactions right. from bits. I thought it was. I mean, we did have. Absolutely. Go ahead. Oh, I, I was going to say we did have the luxury for what it's worth. If I were to slightly counter contradict myself, the one thing I did have was I was able to do a bunch of parts at each place. 
So mm. you were, I did have the ability to like, I would do a joke. We would do like three parts per show and there would, and it would kind of be like, oh, that we got that. You know, like I think tech was like perfect here. And we kind of like locked that one off. Then the next one we do this, blah, blah, blah. So I did have the ability to like miss with one part and kind of be like, all right, like let's try the next. Like, you know, like there was one I show see. I like, there was one show I think I got halfway through like two of them and I just stopped them because I was like, this ain't going in. <laughs> like, let's <laughs> let's try for the next part and just like finally got a part that hit hard. So I did have the ability. So I just, that was the luxury. The luxury I had was each one I had to get a, a good tape, but I did have the ability to be like, I just need 10 minutes at each place mm -hmm. that are great. Mm -hmm. I don't have to kill for the whole time. I just have to get 10 that like connect. I see. I see. A very quick question, not related to the special. Yeah. At what point, because you've been doing comedy for 10 plus years now, 10 or 11. Yeah, 10 or 11. What, when did you get to the point where you're thinking 10 minutes is my sweet spot? I don't know if I ever like, it's interesting. It, it was more of, it was like pretty soon before I filmed a special. Cause it was like, you mm -hmm. know, it was, I was at that point where I was starting to like do hours and I was like, Oh, it, it not just do hours. I was starting to do hours and I was like, I have more material than I need now for an hour. And I'm bored of some of these jokes, you mm -hmm. know, some of these jokes have been mm -hmm. around for quite some time and <laughs> it would be cool to no longer do them. And, you know, sort of this thing of like realizing sort of having that realization, like, I don't think anyone is the the special world is not going to be, I didn't, I didn't feel like a special was around the corner from me, uh, from any like major network. So I was like, I think we got to just do this. Like it was that. And then when I started thinking, like, I think it might be time to like film an hour. I was like, I sort of did this thing where I was like, cause I've, Oh, I kind of want to always treat specials. If this makes sense, a little bit like how musicians treat music videos where it's like, we perform, like they, they perform a song and they perform a song live and that's how they do it live. And then there's a certain point where they're like, okay, we're gonna make a music video. And they, it's not that they change the song, but they add something to it. They, they, they try to do something to accent the material they're working with. And so with this, I was like, when I look at my material right now, I think that there's these strong 10 minute, really beautiful flowing sections. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I was like, I think that it isn't that I'm not doing my act. It isn't that I'm not doing stand-up comedy. It's just that I'm mm -hmm. taking what I'm doing and I'm just like creating a way to watch it that I think will make it even more enjoyable in a way that I can't do live. I can't switch locations live. I can't like, right. I, I can't go like, I will now talk about love, you know? So it was cool. I think I, I, in my mind, I was like, it'd be cool to be able to accent the material was the goal. Did it work? Hard to say, but that was the goal. Uh, that was what I dreamed of. And that's kind of when I came up with it. Nice. Oh, damn. That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. I, I, uh, one of the reasons I was asking, I heard you on community service with Craig Conant, where you were talking about, I think this is early in your career where you were doing at college shows, you were doing an hour and Fun. you were, I think you opened one point for Aaron Carter at a college show. I sure did. Doing sure did. a full hour. 45 minutes, 45 minutes of stand-up comedy for a crowd that had not the slightest clue that this was going to happen. Like the amount of shock. Yeah. Like that's the thing that I met. Cause it, cause like, so the story was I was booked at this college <laughs> to catch everyone up. I was booked at this college, yeah, yeah. Muhlenberg college, uh, <laughs> shout them out. <laughs> shout uh, Muhlenberg out. college. Shout out Muhlenberg College. You guys really fucked me. Uh, but yeah, I was, I was I was booked to do an hour, like normal hour at a college. I'd actually heard from people like, because, uh, you know, you sort of hear about college. You know, there's certain colleges that will bring in comedians. And I'd actually heard like, right. oh, they do great. They have great shows. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they fill it with, they, they have a stage. They fill it with kids. Like, you'll actually do a show. Sometimes you show up to colleges and they're like, 
so we have it's really just for like us like the kids who booked you so you're just kind of going to kind of perform for us and you're like because we don't we, you know, we advertise but like five people show up and you're like oh this is hell um oh, no <laughs> so and, like, and one other i was going to say one other thing is isn't it you have to do the full time because if you go on like yes. a second before or you go off a second before they can uh break that's the contract. something they what uh, the thing I was always told doing colleges was there were two rules, which is you never get off stage until your time is up. They, you have a contract, you have a contract to do X amount of time. And unlike a comedy club where they'll kind of like, not that they don't care, you should do your time everywhere, but like, right. you know, it, shit happens, show start late, whatever, you know, like, it, you know, a comedy club deals with your, they're never going to, they're never going to fuck you. Fuck. It's like, these college students it's like they don't care they're not professional book like they don't care if they burn a bridge with you so they're just like right they, i just remember my agent was like you do not get off stage until you do your time you make sure i don't care if you go over i don't care but you do not go under ever i don't care i don't care if they tell you to go under you don't go under do not go under if it's contractual you do not go under and if they're like adamant tell them to like email me that you're going to go under it was like that it's like that hard like oh there needs to be God. written proof they told you to and then the second thing was never sleep with a college kid um that was <laughs> the other rule i was told was, <laughs> she was like and, and i and to her credit you know because you're a young comic and, you, and like you know this is right I, I got very lucky right so many good young like early influences on me and so to her credit, it was Kate Edmonds, Joey Edmonds presents just was like, not do that. That is, that is, a that is, you know, you are, you are paid to be there. That is a weird dynamic. You know, cause at the time I was like 23, 24, I wasn't insane to sleep with a college kid. I was like oh, pretty okay. out of college, you know, like, yeah, this is like much younger than me. And she was like, I don't care if I, I don't care if it's a grad student and they're older than you do not sleep. Like that is not what you are there to do. Do not do that. And she was right. And it really like. And even like when I started doing clubs, I remember being like, oh, yeah, when I'm in town to do stand up, I don't do that. I don't like doing that. Um, right, right. And I think it really I think it really set me up in a good way. But those are my two rules. Those are the two rules. That's and I tell everybody who does colleges I'm like those are your rules do not, not sleep. Do not sleep with a college kid or or anybody involved with the school and do your time. So with Aaron Carter, yeah. I was supposed to, you know, an hour. I was supposed to do 45 minutes. I've heard it's a great show week before she's like she calls me and she's like so you're there's a problem uh <laughs> they booked Aaron Carter uh they double booked you with Aaron Carter and I was like and in, again in my mind I'm like oh they're gonna cancel me you know and I'm like right. they have to pay me right you know that like I, I can cancel the plane like literally I was remembering like oh, I can cancel the plane ticket like all right you know what do we have to do like and then she was yeah. like no no, no you, they want you to do the show still and I was like, oh, they want me to open for him? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, that sounds bad. I don't know. <laughs> she was like, well, you're gonna. She was like, well, you're gonna. And I was like, all right. But then, you know, again, you're like, all right. So usually when you open for somebody, you do 15. Right, right. Know, maybe, maybe 20, you know, for the most part. And then part, there's like, also usually like, like a, a host that brings on. Uh, maybe guest spot and then feature and then headliner. So yes, kind of warm yeah, so, people so at up. A, so at a club, that's definitely the way. But when you, um, I've opened for bands before, and usually bands, it's like you just want to do a little bit of time. Like you're kind of just oh, like, oh, got it. You know, it's it's more like they're throwing you in as like a change up before they come in with like what they do. So it's like, uh -huh. I got like, I did this uh, can't misfits with this band Magic Giant, who are awesome by the way, and nice. I would do sets before them, and it was awesome. You know, I do 15 to 20 every night and it was just so fun. It was just like a really, mm -hmm. it's like a change up, you know, the crowd comes and they love music and they usually have like a couple of bands and then it's like this comedian, it's like different. And then they come and it was like, it was so cool. I loved it. I love opening for bands, nice. but Aaron nice. Carter was not ideal. Uh, Aaron <laughs> Carter is, you know, <laughs> quite the band we shoot for. And, uh, and I was like, and I just was like 15, 20. And then she was like, oh no, they want you to do the full time. I was like 45 minutes before Aaron Carter. She's like, yeah, that's what they want to do. And again, you cannot leave the stage until they, you know, do it. All right, good luck. And she just hung up and it was, um, it was one of the, you know, those few times. Cause you just, cause I did so many bad shows starting in New York. I do have this instinct where I'm like, I can always make it work. You can always make it work. If you just work hard, you know, if hmm. you, you, there's always a way to figure it out. There's every room has a way to figure it out. 
and I, I stand by it. Every room, if you work hard enough, you'll figure it out. And mm. I remember just, just this, figuring it out, like in the moment, just being up there and then uh, uh, absorbing all of the. You just have these experiences where you're like, you know, you're at a biker bar and they're yeah. all talking and watching TV and you're like, well, this is going to go horribly. And then for whatever reason, like you get them and you, you know, I've had, I had some amazing sets at this, like, at like biker bar, like, you know, cause, cause they'll all of a sudden, like they're not paying attention. All of a sudden you get their attention and they're like super into it. And like, I've had some killer sets in like the weirdest places, hence my special. And so I was like, nice. you know, I, but I, so, so you get used to this idea of like every room is possible, you know, uh -huh. and it's not that I don't bomb, uh -huh. but like I've bombed in packed rooms and I've crushed in horrible rooms. And so mm -hmm. I was like, I can figure this out. And it was one of the few times I remember like spending a week calling every comic I knew. And they were like, man, I don't know. Like, you're going to have to really <laughs> like, you better hang on tight. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do, bro. And uh, yeah, oh, no. we did. Uh, and then I showed up and Aaron Carter was just the weirdest human. But <laughs> nice. Well was this him pre neck tattoos or was this him post? I don't know if he had neck tattoo. I I don't remember the neck tattoo. I remember that he like he kind of talks like this, and he <laughs> uh, and he but he was like, "What's up, man?" And he was like, he talks like that, and he's like, he puts on a good show. Credit where credits do. Um, okay. And he wasn't mean, you know. He was like nice. He was perfectly like like he wasn't a dick. Uh, uh, you know. Also, nice. he wasn't out of his way nice but he like okay. you know a couple times when i was on stage i'd look to the side and he was like kind of watching curiously but he was watching which i mm -hmm, thought was kind of mm -hmm. cool that um, is nice yeah yeah but i i did convince myself like well the crowd's gonna be there ironically right you know we're we're full-grown adult college kids i mean we're not I, we're not going to an aaron carter concert <laughs> I, without some irony to it right and i remember showing up and these girls are like dressed to the not like just dress and i was like we're so fucked and uh i went up there and i, and I just it was the only time i've ever done because this is not a rule i was ever told but i it's a rule i stand by with every college which uh -huh. is like just be positive because so many college gigs are terrible but mm -hmm. they don't always know that and so, you know, the reason why I think I did so well in the college world, still do do well in the, it's still do okay in the college world for the record fan by books colleges, um, is like, I'll just always show up and I'm like, this is great. Let's make it work. Like, you know, and I go on stage and if there's five kids, like, I mean, I mean in my head, I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. But I walk on stage and I'm like, this is gonna be great. Let's have a dope time. Like, let's fucking do this. And college kids nice. really respond to that. They they like the positivity, you know. They 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 didn't show up, and this is true of any club, crowd actually. Nobody shows up to a comedy club to have a bad time. Nobody wants to have a bad time. So when you walk up there and you go, "This is gonna suck," they're all like, oh, "I guess it's gonna suck." And if you walk up and you're like, "We're gonna make this fucking awesome," a lot of times people are like, "All right, like let's make it fucking awesome. Like, I'll give it a shot," you know. It's like you could still bomb, but like they'll give you a chance. So I went up there. I was like. But it was one of the few times ever beforehand I went to them and I was like, hey, can I make fun of this situation? Like, <laughs> yeah. Can I make fun of this? And they were like, sure. And I was like, okay. And I went up and, you know, credit to that crowd. I made it probably 30 before they got fed up with me. But I don't, for I, I, at the 30 point, I think they just thought I was running the light. Like you just felt like these kids were like, there's no possible way he was booked to do 45. I get you. So I get you. He has to be running the light. <laughs> He's there's no way <laughs> this is what they wanted him to do. So I think in their mind they thought I was like bumping it, like you know, you know, just uh, like somebody at the laugh factory being like, I'm gonna do however much time I want to do. It was like Oh no. But it wasn't. Oh, it was me desperately looking at my watch. And I do remember I looked at my watch and I mean at I was in mid joke, and when that thing hit 45. I was like, and then we got a, okay, goodbye. <laughs> like I was out of there. <laughs> oh my God. Well, man, what a way to earn your stripes, Danny. And question. Got to earn your stripes. Yes. Did you, did you stay for the Aaron Carter concert? Hell yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> nice.
<laughs> you that got it. Amazing. I, I, I mean, I was curious. I was like, I'm a big fan of like, with, with, you know, there are many sacrifices you make for stand up. If you want to do stand up comedy, right. you have to make many, many sacrifices for your life. And, but one of the upsides is you find yourself in really cool rooms. You find yourself at some really cool places. Sometimes you find yourself at a free Aaron Carter concert, which is yes, silly, but also like, you know, I know comics who are like, I'm going to go back to the hotel. And it's like, I want to, let's, let's experience this. Let's yeah. experience this moment. And I was like, all right. And I watched the whole thing and you know, he's got a, he opens with like how I beat Shaq to um and, and that thing i mean that thing rocks oh nice. and the Killer. place goes nuts and he does also everyone because he's like he's got how i beat shack he's got aaron's party yeah. um there's like one more like cover he has that was really big on disney mm. channel and so each one of those like aaron's party i remember i i like i didn't clock it but i remember being like this song has been i think it's been 15 minutes of this song like he extends the shit out of that song when he does it, when he did it live, but he put on a hell of a show, man. He had that place rocking credit where credit's due. That is, that's amazing. And, and I want to circle back to just on your zest for life and also the attitude of let's just make this the best experience ever and how people pick up on that because it just, it, it, as a comedian, I think it's an incredibly useful tool even as, I mean, dare I say a sandwich artist or like somebody, I remember when my wife and I lived in Jersey and service industry, especially with food was not great, but we went to Moe's Southwest Grill. I still remember this five years later. Great place, Moe's. But this this guy, what happened? I said Moe's is a great place. Love Moe's. Oh, oh I, Moe's, I South, thought you said Moe's Southwest Grill is a great place. We all know Moe's. I thought, oh, I thought you said it closed down. I, my heart sank no, just no, a no, little no, bit. No, 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 no. Thank no, God. not most. Come on. Come <laughs> oh, on. Oh, man. This is not I the place or time for me to hear this. My back is locking up <laughs> I again. was going to say, you're back already. We can't have that. We can't, <laughs> can't have that kind, of act, that kind of situation. No, no. Oh, man. But this guy was just so happy to be there and was just so happy to serve. And I still remember him. Hey, Zeus. Shout out to you. And if if you're listening, I just can picture that grin of yours. And I feel like mm -hmm. no matter what you do, if it's stand up, whatever, if you've got that attitude, I feel like people feel it. And it's 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 there, you know? Absolutely. It matters. People, people, people pick up on if you're not excited to do stand up comedy. Yeah. And if you're just yeah. there because you've dedicated X number of years to it and you're, you're like, I guess I'm stuck doing this now which I do yeah. know some people in comedy who I'm like, Oh, you just, you know, it's not that they're bad comedians. It's just like, they don't like it anymore. And you know, they don't like it and they, but they're just like too far into quit. And I, and it does bug me. Yeah. Cause I'm like, Oh man, we, I sacrificed. I mean, so much of my life I've sacrificed cause I love this art form and I want to be great yeah. at it. And I don't know why I would sacrifice all that and then not enjoy doing it. And not like try to remind myself every time, like, hey, you, you know, you headline a shitty room and you're like, dude, headlining in general. I mean, when you start just dreaming of he headlining, you know, and and not just headlining, but headlining confidently, like I can do, I can headline. That took mm -hmm. years to be able to be like, yeah, I can headline. I can do it. and I can do that. You know, mm -hmm. doing your own special for no money is like not a not a great like realization to come to of like i guess i'm gonna have to do it myself it looks like netflix isn't calling but it was also like well then let's fucking do it like commit you yeah. know find the joy in those in that and if you if you commit with positivity i do think it helps i agree i definitely agree i also do have to say i don't know if you have any piercings but your headphones on the right side just makes it look like you've got a killer hoop earring and it's ah oh, man i it. wish i did too i'm sorry That's, to uh, say i don't i wish i had cool i wish i was i wish i was one of those i don't have any tattoos or piercings me, me neither yeah yeah I'm, uh just jewish? I, i'm not i'm not no, catholic but uh <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. so you so you can because we're not supposed to. And so even though like it's sort of now like in Judaism, they're like, do it if you want to. Uh like yeah, I'm yeah. still <laughs> I'm still like my mom's not gonna be happy. So I've never I've never done it. 
that's yeah i'm kind of in the i'm in the same boat on that one the the angry mm-hmm, mama mm-hmm. boat for sure I don't oh, want an angry mama can't have it no no absolutely not man i need <laughs> i need her placated and happy with her little boy and his broken sure. back but but um we're gonna danny this has been awesome so far we're gonna wind down and give some okay. advice to some questions that i found on the reddit advice column so let's um, go I hope you're I hope you're bracing yourself. I'm it's ready to cause go. a bad back. Okay, awesome. We've got this first one. It says, My friend borrowed something expensive from me and won't give it back. About three months ago, my friend asked me if she could borrow my hair curling wand. It was about four hundred dollars, and I got it as a gift from my parents a while ago, since I trusted that she would give it back next time we met. I lent it to her. Now three months have passed, and after asking several times to give it back to me. I still don't have it. She always brings up an excuse like, it's at my parents' house. I was at my friend's house this weekend. I'll bring it next time. What do I do? Hmm. So, Uh, Danny. Oh, sorry. Did you have an answer straight away? Well, no. You. Well, what? How do you usually? How do you usually do this? I I don't want to mess up your. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You're. (laughs) You're just being on here is amazing. I'm going to ask you: Are you are you a borrower or are you? a lender do you lend your items or do you borrow items from friends because i feel like there's one or the other i'm not sure if there's a balance so so i don't own a lot of stuff in general i'm just like <laughs> okay. not a i'm just like not a at something like Minimalist. my fiance has had to my fiance has had to work really hard with me on this is like i she was she's just like when she met me she was like you don't own anything I was like, oh yeah, I don't. And I'm a minimal minimalist. My house burned down when I was a kid, so I like also have like a thing about like objects. Like, I you just like, I saw every object in my life leave, and I was like, and it turns out like so little of it mattered. Um, so I'm also like, so I just don't know. But it's also one of those things where I'm like, so I just don't like stuff, whatever. And then you know, at some point, my fiance was like, you don't think that potentially that might have to do with the fact that everything you loved burned one day? And I'm like, (laughs) potentially. But potentially that might have be an issue. Yeah, sure. That could have potentially had some lingering effects. So I don't own anything. So I don't, I want to, I want to say I'm, I want to say I'm just kind of down the middle because I don't really lend because I just don't have anything to lend. It isn't that I won't lend. Um, okay. Okay. But I definitely don't borrow. I, I, I really have trouble asking for favors from friends. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I guess I, so more of a lender than borrow because I have lent like, I I'll, I'll lend more than borrow. I've I've lent things. Okay, okay. I you know it's funny. I am the exact same way. Where I huge minimalist. I, mm-hmm. Nothing burned down. None none of my cherished possessions burned down all at once in a fire. They just slowly went to my younger siblings, and they stole them and oh, burned sure. them down, or or lent them to other friends. So they mm-hmm. they're all away. But my wife is like. Maybe you should have more than one pair of shoes. And I was yeah. like, well, we've had those uh, similar discussions. Yeah, we've like, had these those Adidas. Similar things she's like, yeah, she's like, yeah. why don't you try owning anything? And I'm like, <sighs> you don't get it. It's it's a it, it is a, a sense of burden in, in a certain sense where the more you own, the more responsible I feel that I have to take care of all this stuff. And I have to Just worry about a it a little bit. bit. Like even a lot of the stuff I have, I'm like, I don't need it. Um, so it's like, I don't like it. You know, it's like I right, now own right. things cause she buy, makes me buy things slash buys me things. And some mm-hmm. of it's very useful, but there are things that I have where I'm like, you know, it's cool, but I don't need it. Right. I, I could it, easily. Yeah. So if, if you, if you, plane crashed or no, not a plane crash. Let's make it a happy thing. You got on a cruise and they forgot you and you're on an island, beautiful island. You have mm-hmm. five things, five jealous essentials. What would the items be that you just absolutely need? Could live on forever. Do we have, do we have Wi-Fi or reception on this island? Oh, this is a magical island. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So obviously Fiber we're going to have like, so obviously we're going to have our laptop. Uh, okay. Okay. You know, I think that can cover kind of everything I need there. Um, want my? I think I'd want like a piano. A piano, um, okay. 
Yeah, that'd be a good time killer. And I you like would, it. And whenever like, they rescued, and whenever they rescued me, I'd be like, I'd have like a skill I could present, and so I think that'd be good. Um, <laughs> do you think, play piano you know, currently, or do you? I'm that trying, would be a trying to learn. I used to play as a kid. I'm trying to get back again, but it's not going well. But I just see it in the room right now, so I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, I got a little keyboard, Solid. and I was like, that'd be nice. That'd be good halves. Um, also storage space so you can just crack that thing open if you want to protect your laptop from the tropical storms that's a great point that's a great point yeah, um yeah. i guess a playstation although like i don't love that but like probably <laughs> some sort of way to like do that um fair fair what else i don't know um <laughs> what else would you need i mean this is like the problem this is like this is like where i go into like what else do you need i guess i think i guess some, some I mean, clothing. we could leave it. Like, okay, that's it fair. Some, that's fair. A little bit of clothing and like, I I might even just free ball it if it's just me and well, you can bring your fiance as well. So and maybe she and, counts uh, and, as one oh, thing and, too. And maybe oh sure. I, well, you know, I don't like to think of her as an object. You know, <laughs> I like to think of her as a person, and that's just that's just me being a hero. Um, just that kind of good person but yeah no i uh, i mean she'd be great but i didn't i didn't know she was allowed uh i assumed i was alone on this <laughs> island <laughs> she's optional i mean if you want to bring her you can but uh, oh i would love and, her there but i you know but if, okay. if she can't come i mean that's why the computer exists i can facetime her um, oh beautiful great great yeah i yeah, know i'm always thinking of her of course um and then <laughs> can she, she can hear you right now is that i don't think she can but you never know just never, in case, that's how I do. I love my wife exactly. so much. I, I, yeah, right, of course. But I really do love her. I, I really would be very sad if I had to be separated from her. Truly, right? You know, right, right. You know, we that's, we get married to these, we get married to these people. We uh, we kind of like them. That's what that's what I've exactly. always found to be. A, that's what I've always found to be a very important quality in a in a partner you're choosing to potentially spend the rest of your life with is that you like them. And uh, and so I I do like her, and I do feel like it'd be I do I would be upset if I never got to see her again. I agree. My, I mean, my wife beyond just taking care of me and being a, a <laughs> man child, I think that also I like her so much. I mean, we joke around, we'll watch movies together, we'll go on activities. She'll roast me. It's, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. It's like, she's, she's a best friend and a lover, you know, it's in a, yeah. not, not in like a savage primal way, but like a lover is in a romantic way. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping for. Love I'm her. messing it up. I love her so much. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, but yeah, anyway, I don't know, but also I think this girl should just talk to her friend. I don't understand why we're not having an honest conversation here. Um, exactly. Exactly. This feels like a, this feels like a five second conversation that's been, of just like, Hey, I'm, I'm coming to get it. Where is it? Like, just go get it. Like, I would tell my mom, like, right, where's your mom? I, I just need it. So like, where, where's your mom live? I'll go get it. Like, just go get it. Yeah. It sounds to me like the friend that borrowed it broke it or it's it's gone. I don't know. Well, but sounds... that, but great. But then, but then let's get there. So like, yes. may, you know, so go, where is it? Great. I'm going to go over there right now. And then if it's actually broken, like, let's stop beating around the bush. Let's have your friend be like, okay, I, I broke it and be like, great. Okay. Now let's deal with that problem. But like. We're not getting anywhere with this current thing. So let's let's change it up. Yes, exactly. Let's with one swift wave of the curling wand, let's poof, yeah. figure this out and then get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Okay. Get that I hair love curled. It. Get that hair curled. You go, curl. So we've got this last question. And <laughs> this is husband of four kids sleeps in every day. Normal or lazy? All right, so I want to preface this by saying I love my husband, blah, blah, blah. However, since we've been married for eight years, he sleeps until nine or ten in the morning. Before COVID, he was in the military and would justify that he'd earned the right to sleep in on the weekends because he was up so early during the week. Now that he's out of the military and working from home, he sleeps in pretty much every day. He'll get up to take calls, then go right back to sleep. I'm up 6.30 a.m. pretty much every day, and it's always irritated me that he sleeps in every day. It impedes my ability to tidy our bedroom, and it just doesn't feel fair. I've tried to discuss this with him on this issue, but he's pretty adamant about wanting to sleep. What do I do? I know there was a lot to unpack. Danny, do you, do you have, and your do you fiance have... A, have... Do, you have a do you have a specific question, or are we answering this one? Because I feel like you, you usually come in with your specifics, and I don't want to jump the gun. Oh, no, I was just going to ask you I, just to buy a little time 
Just about do you uh, and your fiance have the same sleep schedule or does one wake up quicker than the other? So during COVID, because COVID threw us off, right? So during so okay. pre-COVID, we would usually wake up. I so I try to keep business hours. Like that's something when I first started comedy, like every comic was like, we sleep late, we stay out late. And I very quickly was like, I don't like that. I don't think that's a healthy way to live. So I try to wake up like eight, eight thirty every day, you know. And like, you know, try to go to bed once I'm done with shows. Um, you are like the golden boy of comedy. I mean, abstaining from college flesh at 23, 24. <laughs> business hours. College yeah. flesh. <laughs> <laughs> I know that as soon as I said it, I was like, that should be edited out immediately. I, but I listen, I did. You're right. Um, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, but it's something actually I really push on comics as I'm like, cause I do think there was this particularly back right. in like the early days, you know, there was this ad to like comics. It's like, it's like a rock star lifestyle. And there's right, still comics right. to this day that live that lifestyle and, you know, more power to you. But I am somebody who's also like, you don't have to do that. Like you can still be, mm -hmm. you can still do this to the maximum and like be responsible. You can do that. You can, you can, you can live a normal life too. You can choose that. Um, and I think like, that's not even just me. I mean, it's like Nate Bargatze has shown that like so, so right. many comics now have just like great lives and live like good you know, just like standard family. Jim Gaffigan has 15 kids. I mean, he's like, and he takes <laughs> care of them and he, and he makes a ton of money. He's a great comic. He writes so much, you know, it's like how much more material right. can a man write? I mean, you know, it's like, he's right. certainly not lazy and it's like, he still manages to like have the family life he wanted. Um, so I do think that's important. So not that I want like a fan, not that I certainly want that, but, or even like that, but like, I want to live a, I want, I, I was like, I want to live like a normal life and so uh <laughs> i try to wake up i try to wake up uh we we stay on the same time during covid okay because there okay. was so little to do we started sleeping in very late mm, and then i had okay. to like well because you know early it was like i mean just get through this thing and yeah then, like, yeah yeah. You know, that was that that was the mindset early on the mindset early on was like just get through this thing like let's just get through this fucking thing you know, right. and then, you know, three months in, it was like, all right, so we're an alcoholic and we uh, we sleep <laughs> until 11 every day. So this is a problem. And it's like I had to really like reverse course. Oh, no. Uh, it, but it was true, man. I remember the first two weeks I'd be like, you know what? Let's have a little drinky poo at 4 p.m. Why you wouldn't know? I? The government. I'm literally doing what I'm told to do. They told me to stay home. I'm actively staying home. I couldn't be doing a better thing than drinking alone. I, I'm basically, yeah, I'm a society savior right now by I, I, finishing. For sure. My fiance, my fiance likes me way more when I'm drunk. So <laughs> she's pumped. Like everybody's happy. Everybody wins when I'm drinking. But then like three months in, I was like, so I drink every night now. So this is a problem. <laughs> and we have to fix yeah. this. I, I remember, yeah, one day after it's just my hand is shaking and I'm like, mm, maybe this is not healthy. Yeah, this me, isn't good. So. This isn't a good lifestyle. And then instead yeah, I tried yeah. weed for the first time in my life. Um, oh man, how was it? I like it. I don't love it as much as, as alcohol. Like I do okay. think I, I, I'm just like, I love the way I love drinking. I love the way I drink. I love who I am as right. a drinker. Like I just love me drunk. I'm just like, a, I love it. But, Can I ask what, it, what is the way you love the way you drink? Is it, is there a certain, do you have like, I'm just like, really I'm just like, a, I'm like a looser fun version of myself that also will make like intelligent decisions. Oh, like I don't like I've never been like even when I was single, like I was never somebody who would like wake up even when I blacked out and be like, look at my phone and see any. It would always like responsible text messages. It was like it's just like <laughs> you would got home text safe. your mom. Get home safe, mom. Get home safe. I literally would wake others. up and I'd be like texting my friends being like, dude, make sure you get home safe. Like I, I was I would just was like. I, I just am, I never drank and dro like I never like the second I got too drunk I was like I'm taking an Uber like I was like always never nice. I just never made dumb decisions on alcohol and I always had a great time so I remember just always being like that's who I want to be you know that so I I love that I love drinking it was perfect weed it's like also I can write really well I, I can like work really well on alcohol both stand up and like just writing scripts. Mm -hmm, harder mm -hmm. to do 
on weed. It's like, it really just kind of like mill. It's just like, I kind of just get like, mm. I just kind of like <laughs> sit around and like watch something, but it's better. Yeah, I think it's better for me health wise. And it's been interesting and I'm trying to get into mm. it. But it's hmm. been a it's that, been a process. I've had to, I'm still trying to figure it out. That, that that makes sense. I've I've been more of a a drinker than a smoker or a weed ingester. But my wife and I, for the first time, we ended up buying little edibles. And my wife, she was like, she needed to go so to the extreme. So long though, nobody yeah. tells you that about edibles until you, you you get into the world, and then they're like, oh yeah, it takes five hours for it to hit, and you're like, Jesus. <laughs> Gonna plan the whole night around this, like at some point reaction. Yeah, it, exactly. Exactly. It takes way too long. Way too alcohol. Long. You take a but, you feel it's like nobody talks about edibles. It's like it takes a year. <laughs> like so, in nine months from now, you're gonna start yeah. feeling it. And, and uh, I know it's only like really an hour, but like an hour is a long time to be like, all right. So the time, like, you get home at like nine or ten you're like oh like i want to take an edible it's like all right so that means it's not gonna hit till 11 I'm hoping to go to bed it's like how, what have we been doing you know like it ruins it yeah exactly sometimes i would try and do a race where it's like how much can i get done in productivity before the edible hits <laughs> but that, i did do that a little uh, bit that was always kind of fun yeah yeah so anyway i forgot the question but um i think it, they'll figure it out the, the, this husband sleeps late and to her i say uh Dude's in the military, so one, let's be nice. Dude's probably put his life on the line for our country, which I'm, which. Thank got, him got, for his I, service. Truly, I got a lot of military in my family. Always very thankful for yeah. military. That is yes. not that is not an easy job. That is a sk- oh, wow. That is not easy. Um, yeah. And then, yeah. second. Yeah, I mean, I think that like due to COVID, I kind of give everybody a little bit of like an extension of like, all right, look, he obviously he like doesn't really have a job at the moment. He's going to get a job at some point. Right. Like it seems like it's more about mm-hmm. like, he doesn't have a job. So I think that's oh. really the discussion she needs to have with him. Is like, you're not having a job and there's a chance he doesn't need to have a job because there's I, I, military pay works very like interestingly. Mm-hmm. I've never fully mm-hmm. understood it. There's a chance she does in which case, like sounds like she's just jealous and it's, you know, I would just remind her. Yeah. that. So I, I don't know. It feels like a, feels like more though of a, like, if you feel like he needs to have a job, then like have that discussion, but just like wake up to wake up. It's like, I do that, but I can understand why somebody else would not necessarily want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. With four kids too, man. I mean, four that kids. Sounds, it's a lot of kids, a lot of kids, a lot of kids. have the kids wake kids. him up. I mean, what are you doing? Keeping the kids at bay? Let them. Well, that's also a part reach. of it that I thought she was going to say where she's like, and then I'm the only one in charge of these kids, but, but, but she didn't seem to really complain about his effort with the kids. It seemed like it's just like an, a jealous. She was like, I can't clean the bedroom. It's like, then don't clean the bedroom. Till yeah. 10. Let, What's the, what is s- the issue here? Let him clean the bedroom. Be like, if you, yeah, just tell him, like, wakes up last. if you want to sleep late, yeah, you fix this. Like, yeah, they, 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 uh, you know, I don't know, but we're only getting, you know, a quick snippet of her life. I don't know the full story. That's, that's, man, I would, you have such a good moral compass, Danny. Your voice sounds kind of like you're going to chew me out, but Ah. you're, you're so wholesome. (laughs) So wholesome. I mean, listen, we all have our faults. I have plenty. Do not get it mistaken. Uh, I have plenty of angry days and I certainly have said many a thing that has hurt, that has been hurtful, but I, I try, I try to try to try to be a, try to try to. Try to think about what I say before I say it. Make it sound somewhat nice. intelligent. Well, well, you have succeeded in that. And I think that is a beautiful thread to just tie in a knot and tie up this episode. Danny, thank you so much for joining. And, uh, thank you so talking much for having about- me. Absolutely. And thank you for talking about your special. I wanted to ask, too, what else have you got to plug? Um, where can people follow you? All that good stuff. Sure. So... Um- uh, I'll do my, my plugs, which is first off, I do have a free special on YouTube is called six parts. Yes. Uh, it is, it absolutely means the world to me. If you just watch it, I just watch a part of it. And if you don't like it, you can stop. I, but I, I promise you'll have a really good time and, and I'm so proud of it. It means the world. Follow me on social media. That really helps. Um, at Danny Jollis, just my name on all social media. Um, um is there anything um i do shows all around la but instagram is usually the best way to find my shows i'm starting to host a show every thursday at club tiggy 
called Peacock uh, starting mm. August 26th uh, that I'm very excited to do. And I think that's like a great place to see me. I also think uh, if you're in LA, August 21st, I'm doing the JFL gala um, at the th- oh. hosted by Howie Mandel. I would love if people came. Cause I think I'm, I'm going to be doing a pretty cool set there. A little bit of a artistic piece. I'm very proud of very nice. Very nice. And then the last thing, and I say this on every podcast, but it is the most important thing I will say is uh, stand up comedy is like hockey. Uh, it is very fun to watch on TV, but it is just a different experience live. It's just a different, different thing. Uh, people do not realize this because you watch a stand up comedy special and you think that's what stand up is, but stand up comedy lives in the room. You got to see it live. If you have not, seen live Sam comedy. Do not worry about seeing me. I love it. If you see me, but just look up your local comedy club and go see a comic live. You will have the time of your life and you will never stop going. Beautiful. I, I love it. I think I've heard that a couple of times before. I do it from, on every from, podcast. So from at you. this point, everybody's pretty sick of this plug, but I think it's important. <laughs> but no, I think it's great. Tired. I think it's great. But no, 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 I'm not, I'm definitely not tired of it because I think that it's it's very nice to hear somebody that's encouraging, just people getting out there, connecting, enjoying that experience. Yeah, so, it's the and, best art form. And I don't think, and yeah. I think a part of it is people don't realize it because you just see it on TV and you don't realize like as good as it is on TV, like this is a live art form. It, it lives in the room in, in a way that no yeah. other art form can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We So I just think, uh, I just think it's a good thing to remind people of is it's just, so so great and when good stand-up when comedy clubs book good stand-up comics no matter who it is you they will convert people into stand-up comedy fans and they will keep coming back and it's very important beautiful couldn't be better said oh well thank you danny and all those links are going to be in the show notes for all you listeners and viewers so you can just click right there you don't even have to be like how do you spell jollis even though it's on the title of the episode so if you just looked once all right i'm getting a little too stern with my listeners so thank you (laughs) thank you guys so much (laughs) and danny thank you really appreciate it and um well looking forward to see what what comes next with you thanks man we'll see what happens say fini mes amis that's right it's the end of the episode i thought that that was an absolute tubular experience i hope you guys uh are in accord with my evaluation but if you're not what are you doing still here it's the end of the episode you guys should have taken the fifth exit back i don't know where you're still here but you know what if you are and you're in the giving mood while you're doing things that you don't want to do follow me leave a review subscribe and watch Danny's special, follow him, give him all the love you can in an appropriate way. And, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Isn't that the golden rule? And that's really all I've got for today. I have exhausted my windpipes and I'm going to go in and recharge, plug myself in. And you guys, you know, make sure that you're recharged, make sure that you're refreshed, make sure that you take care of yourselves too. So I think it's love thyself before I love thy neighbor because you got to give yourself some love, give yourself some recharge. So go ahead and do that. And uh, while I'm ordering you around, you know, sit down. It doesn't matter if you're already sitting, sit harder. Okay. Sit as hard as you can close your eyes and just think I am a beautiful person. All right. Even the mole people, because mole people are not beautiful. All right. All the mole people listening. I'm a beautiful person. And I'm going to leave you with that, all you beautiful people and mole people. Mwah!